Hi, welcome to The Wine Glass, and today we're going to be talking about decanters and aerators. Now the reason that we either use decanters or aerators is because our wines are very old and we want to go ahead and use a decanter to let the sediment settle down, or we have a very young wine that's very vibrant and we want to kind of just mellow it out just a little bit. The two wines that I'm going to be using today is going to be the Smoking Lagoon 2005 Cabernet Sauvignon from California and the Leco 100% Tempaneo 2011 Crianza. Now I'm going to go ahead and start with the decanter and I'm going to go ahead and grab that Smoking Lagoon. Now, just a little recap on how to open our wine bottles from last episode. Just go ahead and go right into the center and then just go down from there. Now, decanters have been used for a very long time for older wines to kind of go ahead and let that sediment sit down. You'll see that a lot of decanters have different shapes and sizes. Mine is more of a traditional shaped decanter, just really wide at the base and very thin on the way up. There we go, nice little pop. Now, the way you want to pour into a decanter, you don't want to pour straight through. You kind of want to go a little bit at an angle. That way the sediment kind of stays in the bottle a little bit and very little goes into the decanter. So we're just going to go ahead at a very nice angle. And then just pour it all the way out, just like that. So as you can already see, we do have some sediment right here. Now it's okay if you have some sediment in your glass, but some people aren't really too keen on having too much sediment into their glass. So we're gonna not worry about that, a little, not too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this down. I'm actually going to insert photos of the sediment on here and the sediment that's actually left inside the bottle. So you can kind of get an idea of how much actually is in the entire bottle. From there, we're going to move on. So a couple tips. If you're only going to have one glass of wine, you can actually let it breathe within the glass. That way you don't have to aerate the entire bottle if you're only going to have one glass of wine. So once again, I'm just going to do the same basics from last episode. I'm just going to go ahead and open that wine bottle. Let's see if we can get another nice pop today. Ready? A little quiet one this time. So, like I said before, you can always just let it air out just into the glass by itself. That way we're only drinking one glass at a time. Now, if you are going to have multiple glasses in one sitting and you don't want to wait for it to aerate in every single time, we have an in-bottle aerator. Now, the way this works is there is small bubbles, like little holes, and where the air will actually go in and it'll combine with the wine to kind of just open it up. So the way it is, you have to dampen this just a little bit, which I have ahead of time, and you're just gonna stick this right into the bottle. And then when you go to pour, you're gonna hear a very distinct kind of like guggling sound, and that's actually it doing its job. Just like that. So you see all those bubbles there? So all those bubbles have not been produced because that wine is being introduced to that oxygen in a very small tunnel. So it just kind of produces a bunch of bubbles in the process. Now, say you have multiple glasses that you want to fill up and you don't want to do this because you're going to kill out the bottle immediately, then you have one of these. This is an over the glass aerator. You can just kind of hold it over. My model in particular does have a little bit of a filter. So if you want to go ahead and use it on a wine that has sediment in it, you can just put it right on top. This one does not have sediment, so I'm going to not go ahead and use that. And then all you have to do is pour it. When you hold it, you'll see that there are two holes on each side. Make sure you don't hold on to those holes because that's what's going to introduce the oxygen into your wine. So just hold it right over. And then just pour. It's recommended that you don't pour into the center of it. I like to kind of just swirl around just a little bit to give it some room to do its job. So then, and it comes with a really cool stand. You just put it right there and right back on top. Move this over. So those are two really great ways that you can aerate your wine so that you have a bit more of a pleasant experience. 
Now, once again, I just want to go over. Not all wines do need to be decanted or aerated. White wines should not be decanted or aerated at all. Normally, they're kept in a very cool temperature and that kind of keeps their flavor the way you want it. Red wines, a little bit softer red wines, I don't really recommend aerating or putting in a decanter for too long because it can overly soften the mouth. The wines I would recommend normally using a decanter or an aerator for are going to be very harsh or strong wines. Uh, for example, the Cabernet Sauvignon, a Zinfandel, Malbec, or Shiraz. Those are going to be the wines that I would recommend more aerating, decanting, letting them breathe in general. Now when you go to decant a wine, it's going to be anywhere between 30 to an hour. So I would recommend staying around the 30-35 minute mark because you don't want to overly expose your wine to oxygen either. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, drink responsibly, and happy drinking.